I'm Josh Petzl. I'm a, a director of IT at IX Systems. I'm also a member of the FreeBSD project. I wear a lot of hats for them. I do, uh, I'm on the release engineering team. I'm a ports committer. Um, I manage some of the infrastructure boxes, especially the ones that are at ISC uh, for the project. And so I've been working with the project since 95. Uh, um, started working for an ISP back then that was, you know, in those days was trying to get off commercial operating systems. And so I kind of started a ride that's lasted for a lot longer than I thought it would, but uh, it's been fun. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today is uh, FreeNAS. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that, but it's a uh, open source free uh, NAS solution. So free NAS, I guess, is a fitting name, unimaginative as it might be. And it's uh, based uh, indirectly on FreeBSD. It's based on a product, product called MonoWall, which is an adaptation of FreeBSD to run on, on a router as a firewall. It's uh, targeted as an embedded device. And um, when the founder of the project was looking for a way to easily configure a FreeBSD machine to act as a network storage server, he took a look at what was out there. He wasn't very happy. He was uh, fairly in bed with using FreeBSD. He was sick of configuring it by hand through the CLI. And so he was looking for a way to configure it with a GUI through a web interface. And he looked around at what was out there. He found this monowall project. They had uh, very similar very similar goals. Um, the Monowall project was a guy who wanted to use a FreeBSD box and configure it from a GUI. And so a lot of the pieces and parts, he had a build system, he had an installer, he had an upgrade mechanism. He had a GUI, it did firewall things and not storage things. But uh, for, for Olivier's purposes, the founder of the project, he said, that's good enough, I can modify the GUI. And so that's what he started doing. He started modifying the GUI and essentially forked Monowall into a FreeNAS project. It was something that he started in his spare time. He's not really even a programmer. It was just, I want to do this. And he's a FreeBSD enthusiast. And uh, it started to gain some traction. It turned out he wasn't the only person that wanted to use FreeBSD as a storage device on their network. And uh, pretty soon he had some users, and pretty soon he turned it into a project. Uh, I think, Matt, do you remember what the anniversary of the project? It's five years, it's but five was years it was tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. So it's been around as a project for you know four years and five years less a day. Um, oh, I should have switched to this slide. Fast forward to today. Um, five years later, he's had over 800,000 downloads of the FreeNAS appliance from his SourceForge site. And that's not tracking some of the older versions that he released, some of the early history in the project, uh, but the recent relevant versions. So he has quite a uh, user community and he has a lot of mind share. And it's um, his user community or the user community of the FreeNAS project is sort of uh, interesting in that there's users who are very much um, you know, carrying a torch for FreeBSD or for BSD Unix, and they're like, this is a great product, and we use it. And then there's other people who don't know what it is behind the hood or under the hood. They just know it's got this GUI, I click on some stuff, I have some storage, it's great, right? And so we run into a lot of people who FreeNAS is a FreeBSD, and they're very, very proud of that and very happy about that. Look at how viable FreeBSD is as a base for other things. And we run other people who go, oh, it's a Linux distribution of some sort, you know, and, and of course it's not, but they don't, they don't care. They just, they have this thing, they have a GUI, they configure it, it goes. Um, so he's got a very eclectic sort of user base in, in that he has enthusiasts and then he has people who just want network storage for cheap. Um, so, like I mentioned previously, he started using Monowall as a base. There were a lot of advantages for that. You know, he was looking as a single person, what can I do in my spare time? He was looking at what's out there, what do I want to reinvent for the wheel? By picking up Monowall and using it as his base, he could focus on making the changes to the GUI and making minimal changes and getting something out of the box that was, uh, you know, a minimal, a minimal investment in time and a maximum return. And so uh, that's what he chose to do. He ended up with a system that, you know, he changed the GUI and essentially it was monowall under the hood and he got what he wanted. Five years of polish later, 
um, he's got an impressive list of features. It's FreeNAS is very full featured. As we've been uh, working on it, it, it's amazing some of the features that are in there. It's got a BitTorrent client. It, it's got some really, you know, things in there that you just go, oh, you know, they put a web server in, you know, because he's had it out in the community and somebody says, hey, I, I want a web server on this and Olivier says, okay, well, make it happen and I'll put it in and they do. And so five years of that, you end up with a very long list of impressive features and in a lot of ways, it's a fairly full featured entry level NAS you know, solution. It doesn't have a lot of uh, high-end features that you'd find, you know, for instance, it has no provision for failover, it has no provision for managing, you know, RAID controllers from the GUI, but in terms of I have a PC here with four hard drives in it and I plug it in and install this, it, it's a fairly impressive product. There are some disadvantages to his choice of using Monowall, which weren't necessarily a disadvantage when he started this project. They weren't necessarily a disadvantage five years ago. It was probably the right choice for them. But over time, as it's become a polished product and as the user community has started asking for more features, um, you run into some limitations. The first limitation, and probably the hardest one to overcome from a terms of managing a software product, is Monowall is a fork of FreeBSD. And FreeNAS is a fork of Monowall. And so, when you make changes to FreeNAS, as it sits right now, you're changing Monowall, which is changes from FreeBSD. And so when FreeBSD comes up with something and you want to import it, that's fine, but that means that you're diverging from Monowall. And when Monowall comes with a feature and you want to import it, that's fine too, but that's not necessarily, unless it came upstream from FreeBSD, it's diverging from FreeBSD. And when you make changes, you diverge from them both. And so over time, what you run into is you find you're maintaining your own thing, your own distribution, and importing changes becomes as much work as making the changes yourself. And so you go, hey, I want this functionality, I want this feature, and oh, look, FreeBSD did it, but then it's going to break my you know, the way that I get things upstream from Monowall, so it might be easier just to make, do the change over again than put the patch in. And so you end up spending more and more time integrating changes from upstream than you'd like to. Um, another huge disadvantage that wasn't a disadvantage early on, but is now, is the GUI in Monowall is hardwired. And so the GUI that he inherited and started changing is hardwired as well. And so when you pull up a GUI for the FreeNAS appliance as it sits right now, that's all statically hardwired code. If you go to add something new to it, it's not hooked up to the GUI and there's no way for it to hook up to the GUI aside from making static changes to the GUI. Well, that's fine, except that the user base has gotten quite large and some of them have interesting ideas about what they want their storage appliance to be. They've started to go, hey, this is a really great general purpose thing I can put on my network and it has a bunch of storage, but it would be even better if I could plug my printer into it and then all my machines on it could print. And that's fine, and it's a good idea, I suppose, except that now you need a GUI for managing a printer. And if you don't have a printer, you maybe don't want that GUI. And there's no way to dynamically include that and say, okay, this guy wants the printer package installed, and he wants it to show up as GUI. You either have the GUI show up for everybody or nobody. And so users ended up the end users of the systems ended up customizing their installations. And so you can go and install FreeNAS and then go and install, say, Cups, and then you can find some patches and it'll make it show up in the GUI, and that's great. And then there's a new FreeNAS version that comes out and your GUI goes away. And you have to reintegrate your changes back into the GUI again. So end users, especially advanced users, end up either with an unupgradable system or they end up redoing work that they've done time and time again. Well, you know, while there are some enthusiast types out there that are more than happy to spend their weekend redoing stuff and, and making tweaks, a lot of their users of the system are just, I want to plug the thing in and, and have some storage on my network and then go, you know, shopping or, you know, go out for dinner with my girlfriend or whatever. You know, they, they have lives 
that, that don't revolve around uh, coding. And so, I know, it's hard, hard to imagine, but no, they do, they do. They, it's, it's true. Um, so that became more and more of a disadvantage. And it, over time, people want to do more than just print. You know, they want to hook up a VPN server to this thing. They want, it, it, the list goes on and on. And with a lot of users, of course, you start looking at the requests they have. And some of them are very easy to group into, OK, a lot of people want this feature. And then some of them are, OK, 40 people want this feature. But there's 1,000 of those. And you know, it's like, well, how do you do that? Um, so th that became essentially an insurmountable. That was a problem for him in that we're going to have to ditch this GUI and rewrite it. Um, another issue that he's had, that the project had, was monowall is based on FreeBSD 7. And that's fine for a firewall. There was no compelling reason for monowall to upgrade. Um, but for a storage device, uh, FreeBSD 8, offers a number of advancements and enhancements over FreeBSD 7. Uh, the biggest one, of course, well, I don't know about of course. Um, sorry, I'm used to talking to FreeBSD people. So sometimes I make assumptions that I shouldn't. The, the biggest problem is that in FreeBSD 7, ZFS was an experimental file system. And it had a very old version of ZFS at this point. It had version 6 was the last version that was imported into FreeBSD 7. And there's no plans to go any further than that with it. Um, and of course, FreeBSD 8 has a newer version. It's 14 in the latest released version. It's 15 in the development branch of FreeBSD 8. And um, you know, there's patches to get all the way up to version 28. Well, of course, people want that. If you're using a storage device and you want, you're, you're concerned about features and functionality in ZFS as well as system stability and usability, you want to track newer versions. Monowall had no interest in doing that. And so, once again, the project is faced with a choice. What do you do? Do you try and integrate these changes into your own distribution and further, you know, diverge, make it harder and harder to get things from upstream? That's, that's a bad choice. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have used open source projects as the basis of a, any sort of other project, but the further you diverge, it becomes a maintenance nightmare. And I've worked on more than one project where it's essentially dead-ended because the deltas between the project and the upstream source became so big, it was simply infeasible to continue on. You, know, you just, we're done. Right, so, so that was a, another disadvantage that once again didn't hit him right away, but, or hit the project right away, but uh, it became an issue. Um, another disadvantage of using my monowall is it's, it's an embedded product. Um, it's designed for embedded devices, and while some storage devices sort of fit in that, you know, I have a PC and I have a couple hard drives in it, and you can kind of make it look like an embedded device, some aren't. You know, some people have uh, big servers at home, or they're using them for their business, and they go, I have the 16 bay 3U, and it's not really an embedded device anymore. You know, it's really, it's got, uh, eight processors and 48 gigs of RAM and 16 drives and, and it's, it doesn't really fit well into the embedded model or the embedded mindset. And there's really no way to support those sorts of things either when, because monowall doesn't care, it's a firewall. You know, nobody installs a firewall on a big machine if they don't have to. So. I, don't know, I think I covered all this stuff. Maybe I should have switched to this slide a little sooner. But the bottom point is really the, uh, is really the important one to this. They came to the conclusion, the FreeNAS project developers came to the conclusion that they were simply going to have to rewrite the product in order to satisfy the demands placed upon it. What they had was good for what they did, but the people were demanding hey, if, if we're going to keep using this, we want this and this and this and this. If this is going to be viable for us, we want these things. And the answer to every one of them was, we need to redo that. We need to redo that. We need to redo that. And so it, it just became inevitable that if this is going to continue to be a viable product, we're going to